Hey everybody, welcome to Redeemer and the Wednesday Reflection. Um, today is going to be a little different reflection because uh, I read yesterday about the Supreme Court decision to uh, uphold the uh, the praying coach wanting to pray on the fifty yard line uh, of uh, the football games with his his stu- with his his players his his student players, um, and. I got to say, it kind of worries me a little bit, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Why would me, uh, an ordained uh, minister, uh, worry about uh, encouraging and and upholding um, this man's uh, ability to to pray with his students uh, following a football game? Well, as many of the news outlets have have, uh, described and and, and, described, already done a great job uh, outlining the the, the uh, court opinion and the dis- dissenting opinion. Um, uh, it, it blurs the line between uh, separation of church and state. Now, the wall of the separation of church and state is something that uh, uh, Thomas Jefferson uh, quoted in 1802, um, and he was referring back to a, an earlier uh, English precedent. And... and why I believe the separation of church and state is really good is that on the one hand, I, um, you know, I'm not trying as, as uh, I, the church uh, shouldn't be trying to run the government. That's the government's job. But also likewise, I don't think the government should be weighing in on um, beliefs of the church or the church's business, so to speak. Um, and I'll talk more about the Supreme Court thing in a second, but for example, um, in England, uh, there is a monarchy that uh, rules by divine right. And so the Queen of England um, is the uh, head of the Church of England, uh, the, the, its head and its defender. Um, you know, we have the Archbishop of Canterbury, for example, who is the, the uh, figurehead of the uh, Anglican Communion. But, um, you know, even above the archbishop is the queen. Um, And England's state religion is the Church of England. Um, In fact, even uh, uh, British uh, priests are paid by the government. um, And their salaries are allotted and and fixed um, by the government. Um, In fact, it was... uh, uh, you had to um, be an Anglican, essentially, to hold any kind of governmental office for years until finally um, uh, allowances were made for uh, the dreaded Catholics in English history. And that Protestant Catholic or that Anglican Catholic uh, um, de- uh, uh, um, turmoil uh, has long since been a part of uh, many parts of the United Kingdom throughout its uh, different uh, decades in history. Uh, it's a conflict that has ebbed and flowed, especially, you know, uh, in, in recent memory during the Troubles of Ireland. And so even though in, uh, in the UK, you know, you do not have to profess a, um, an Anglican faith to hold office anymore, um, I think that is good. I think that helps the representation of uh, the government um, by its many diverse peoples. Um, and remember, when the Founding Fathers were setting up um, the American government, um, you know, you had your Articles of Confederation, but then also after that, you know, didn't quite work, you had the, uh, the Constitution. And, um, and they were very clear about making a separation of church and state. Remember, the, um, the American forefathers didn't want a king. They didn't want someone who ruled by divine right. Um, Likewise, they didn't want um, uh, to see any of the troubles that they had seen with the, um, essentially, the the Protestant-Catholic warring that had been going on. And part of that had to do with the fact that uh, the, the Church of England was the religion of the state. And so by not having an official uh, governmental sanctioned religion uh, that uh, solved a lot of those problems. 
And so to get away from that, the, the, the state, according to Jefferson, should take a neutral tone regarding religion, but should not bar anyone from religion. Um, the idea of setting up America as a Christian nation um, was certainly the idea of pockets of people. I mean, the, the Puritans of uh, England uh, certainly caused lots of trouble. And in fact, it was, it was um, you know, we think of the pilgrims and the Puritans who came in fleeing persecution from England. Well, they were also causing tons of problems in England and pretty much being awful people. Um, and so for them to come and find a place where they could establish their own uh, uh, free space to exercise the kind of religious life they wanted to is all fine and good. But that is not to say that these were the first peoples who came to um, establish what we would now call America. They were a pocket group, just like many pocket groups came over to the New World to uh, uh, start a land that they wanted to exercise their liberties in. And that's the whole point, is that America is a place to exercise your liberties. And that is why separation of church and state is so uh, vitally important, that the government will not in, uh, inhibit or hinder your uh, liberties, but it will also not um, uh, choose one over the other. Uh, Jefferson said, um, he, was, he was speaking about um, the Bill of Rights and, and the First Amendment, uh, that believe, uh, to quote, believing with you that re- he, was, he was writing to the Danbury Baptist Association, and in this letter he said, believing with you, the association, that religion is a matter which lies solely between man and his God, that he owes account to none other for his faith or for his worship, that the legitimate powers of government reach actions only and not opinions. I contemplate with sovereign reverence that the act of the whole American people, which declared that their legislature should make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, thus building a wall of separation between church and state." And this establishment clause, the separation of church and state, as it's commonly known, uh, does a great thing because, one, it doesn't tell uh, the government, or it doesn't tell the church to interfere with government. It also doesn't give the government authority to make rulings on uh, church things. If there is an internal church matter, um, the diocese will take care of it, or, or the uh, governing body above that, the Episcopal uh, primacy, would, would deal with that, not a government body. Um, in England, for example, um, there were problems where uh, bishops wanted to solve things internally, and the monarchy wanted to uh, solve things judicially, and so you had the government coming in and deciding matters on behalf of the church, whether the church wanted them to decide those things or not. Uh, that led to a lot of problems in the 1500s and especially in the 1640s uh, in England. And so you had our American, uh, their American cousins were uh, looking at England and saying, we should avoid that by not having the government do religious uh, oversight. So let me get back to um, why I think separation of church and state is really important. Uh, because I don't want the government to tell me who I can and can't help with um, a supporting, uh, you know, helping uh, pay someone's bill, for example, or how I can uh, conduct uh, uh, liturgies, um, what I can preach on and what I can't preach on. Um, there are, uh, again, but there are certain guidelines. You know, I, I don't have free reign for all. For example, I can't, um, I can't give a political. Uh, sermon that that tells you to vote a certain way or not or tells you to vote for a particular candidate because that would affect my um, or the church's uh, nonprofit status. And again, we get that benefit from the state. The state uh, considers churches as nonprofit organizations. Uh, would I like to keep that status? Yes, yes, I would. I fully acknowledge that the church benefits from 
uh, some sp specific uh, privileges uh, given to us by the state. But at the same time, I am glad that we can handle things, for the most part, internally. Yes, there are uh, legal issues where the institution, like the, the corporate body of the church, has to, for example, uh, appeal to co the, the, the judicial courts for rulings over you know, whether this breakaway group owns the church property they left with or whether they have to return it to the the previously owning diocese. You know, we've seen that happen in South Carolina, for example. Um, but aside from those legal matters of, of who owns this property or not, um, actual internal things within the church are best left with the church. Likewise, um, government employees, whether they're working at a, a state or a district level um, or a federal level, um, should be able to exercise their religion uh, with perfect freedom. Um, but that also means that anyone who's in a fiduciary relationship uh, and has power and authority and influence over others, i.e. a football coach, um, should not specifically do something so prominent as to play or to pray on the 50-yard line of a game, in my opinion. Uh, the, as, as others have commented, uh, yes, this man was, was, was exercising his religious freedom, and the students uh, who joined with him were also exercising theirs. However, I do believe that in doing such a, in such a prominent way on the 50-yard line after the game um, and having sort of that the culture of, you know, I want to be a part of this team, I'm a member of this team, so I have to join in, um, unduly uh, uh, either disenfranchises people who are, have an established uh, religion that's not the coaches or, um, you know, may, might be a, a professed atheist. And so I think if you are willing to uh, say that, that the prayer for the, from the, coming from the coach in such a prominent way that's done right smack in the middle on the 50-yard line, which is kind of an established uh, place of honor um, on the football field, um, is much different than uh, having a prayer circle um, on the sidelines or in the locker room or some other place that is less visible and less prominent um, than in this specific example. If you're going to have prayer in schools, no offense to teachers, but I think I'd rather have um, trained religious instructors uh, giving those lessons. Um, I'm not saying that, that teachers can't uh, educate themselves in such things, but you know, if you're going to lead prayer in school or if you're going to teach religion in school, you're going to have to do it um, across the board. So you know, if, if, you, if you like having the, uh, the football coach leading prayer after a game, n you know, get ready for being just as excited about um, a rabbi or imam or um, a, a, a Sikh or a Hindu um, representative um, leading prayers uh, in that way. Um, because if we do it for Christians, we have to do it for everyone. Because, again... This is not a Christian nation. It was never meant to be. It was meant to be a place where we could all exercise our freedom and have the liberty to express our God uh, in the ways that, that are meaningful and, 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 and are, are, are meet and right so to do. But we are not a Christian nation. We are a nation of free uh, thinkers and free people. And that means uh, accepting uh, everyone's uh, um, free choice. That is a, a mighty power that we have. And there's a whole other video on Christian nationalism, which I will gladly talk about another time. But for right now, um, I'm a little bummed about the, uh, the Supreme Court ruling. I don't think it's the right idea. Um, I think it's going to create more problems than it does, and it... Uh, I think unduly influences people from, um, especially young students, from making their own informed decisions as they uh, grow into their own understanding of faith. Again, that's weird for me coming from someone who teaches people about faith and hopes to grow uh, young people in the church and have a faith in God and to 
rely on the teachings of Jesus. It's a weird thing for me because I'm doing exactly the thing, but I'm not a state employee. Also, I just think it's the right thing to do. Um, and also, you know, full disclosure, I used to teach religion and do exactly what this, uh, and, and lead students in prayer. But I was also working at an Episcopal school. And I had students of many different faiths. Now, these were younger students who, who um, you know, may not be, have a fully rational mind. They were elementary age. But I certainly loved it when Jewish and Hindu and Sikh students uh, shared their culture and their prayers and, 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 and what was important to them with the rest of the class. Because even though I was an Episcopal religious educator, I was happy to make room for everyone to express faith. Because here's the thing, guys. Whether it delves into uh, uh, pluralism or... or or um, a, a religious liberty that, that, that washes too, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, you, know, you are presumptuous to feel that uh, any uh, denomination or religion fully understands God. And what it is about Christianity, and specifically the Episcopal Church that speaks to me, is the... Is the the greatest and best way I can feel to express uh, how I understand God, the world, creation, Jesus, and how I can walk that faith. And if, um, and if a neighbor of mine is, is Jewish, I want that neighbor to be the, the, the best Jew they could be. If my neighbor is Sikh, I want that person to be the best Sikh that they can be. If I have a friend who is struggling without any faith, um, I want them to find... Uh, the best ethic and uh, humanistic outlook they can find. Does that sound counterintuitive? Well, compared to what a lot of people believe about how you either have Christ or you have nothing, you either are saved or you're going to hell, and, and, and we know how this works. Um, we don't. But it is faith that helps bridge that gap and bring us hope and joy in our miss or our lack of understanding. So I do believe that the Bible contains all things necessary for salvation, but I'm not fool enough to claim that I know everything about how the world and the cosmos work. That is why separation of church and state is very important. I don't want to have anything to do with how the government works. I want the government to do that. But I also would rather not be responsible for the government, and I don't want the government to be responsible for me, my faith, and this beautiful institution. So if you want to have a conversation about that, or you want to tell me that I'm dead wrong, or anything, uh, let me know. I would love to continue this conversation, and thank you for letting me uh, uh, go much further on than I was originally planning. So thank you, everyone, and God bless.